Live from Detroit, I'm Greg Davis, along with Steph Pride. How you doing? Oh, Steph Pride is my name today. <laughs> you change it every day. I did it on purpose. <laughs> so so y'all know her real name. Right. We're live from Detroit. It's going to be a wonderful program. Uh, call somebody and tell them that we're on. If they don't have Dish Network, 9397, then they can watch us on Watch Impact. You were still putting in the other thing. Yeah, time for Impact. No, yeah. it's Watch, watch Impact. Impact. Dot com and then also if you're in Indiana and um, Michigan you go to Comcast 397 or check your local listing and uh, we welcome all of you uh, live from Detroit and today is going to be a wonderful program yes the young lady is going to be with us today who was my executive assistant for some years mm -hmm. and I passed it here in Detroit she is a daughter uh, in the ministry, and uh, her name is Elder Marietta Elder Jones. Yeah. I call her Mills, <laughs> so it's kind of hard to break that, but she was married, and uh, we're going to hear a story about her marriage and the man she loved and how his life was taken and how she's turned that into a whole foundation. Wow. Real life stories. Wow. Our feature artist for today and music in the background, Bishop Richard, Mr. Clean White. You listen to his CD. Uh, you can go and download that. Um, the single is out. We're going to talk more to him about it. But go and uh, purchase. Don't, don't take, you know, don't, don't bootleg. Go and buy it. That's our artist for today, and we're going to be talking to him later in the program. You know, it is so awesome to be able to see those who uh, you have nurtured, in the past grow and blossom and be all that God wants them to be. Certain people in life, you, you see them later and you say, oh, I'm not surprised they're doing this or that. Well, I have one today who was my executive assistant for uh, three or four years as I pastored here in Detroit. And now she's actually 40 years old. And, and uh, well, it, your bio says that, I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> I'm not, you, then don't put it in the okay, bio. Okay, Bishop. It says it in the bio. Okay, okay. I'm giving you an introduction and you're going to give me the eyes. <laughs> she's 40 years old now. She's of age and she has written a book. She's a widow, though, uh, at 40 years old. She became a widow. And uh, she's here to talk about the life that she's lived, but also the life she lived with her husband. Uh, much torment, much pain. And she's put it in the book because that's what he desired. He left his memoirs. And uh, she honored that memory by putting it in the book. And today we're talking to Marietta uh, Mills Jones. I know her as Mills. That's what I called her. When she was in trouble, I used to say, Mills! Uh -huh. <laughs> in my own words, my life journey from beginning to eternity. Uh, the memoirs of her late husband, William Bernard Jones. And I also say that I knew him and his, his entire family. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Thank you, Bishop. Dad. <laughs> and your dad. This is my daughter in ministry, yes, and I'm so proud of you Amen. Um, and the things that you have done and all that you've become. Talk about um, Bernard, first of all. Um, well, as you know, his mom and I were, you know, best friends. She was like my godmom, and we were in ministry. Elder Joyce, yes. Yes, we were in ministry with you, and I met him through her. Um, Bernard had a troubled life growing up, um, 13 years old, going out on his own, being in the streets, um, in and out of trouble, um, in and out of prison. Um, but when we met, um, well, before we got married, he gave his life to the Lord, total transformation that God did in his life. Um, but a, a year into our marriage, those demons that he really hadn't dealt with began to come up again, um, meaning the use of drugs. Um, like I said, within a year of us being married, the drug use started again. But the one thing about um, my husband was that he was brutally honest um, about what he did, what he was going through, about the torment that he felt you know, in the midst of it. Because when you look at someone with an addiction, it's not the typical person that you see as having an addiction. So really, people with an addiction doesn't have a look to them anymore. Like you see the people That's on the true. corners. Um, you think you associate them with drug uses. They're but, on Wall um, Street. They're exactly, everywhere. They're exactly. They're in the boardroom. They're exactly. on the golf course. Exactly. Just like they talk about social drinkers, they're social addicts, mm -hmm. meaning that they can function even though they have this addiction. Um, so that's pretty much how Bernard was. But his thing was is that he trusted God through it all. 
But the only issue was with him was he knew the letter of the word. He didn't know the spirit behind the word, meaning that he knew that God could deliver him, but he didn't know how to allow God to deliver him, meaning that um, he knew that God was a deliverer. He knew that God was a healer. But he thought it was something he had to do, meaning there, you know, there is something we have to do as believers. But the thing is, is just receive what Christ has already done. That's what we what we're called to do. But he thought staying at home and, you know, staying away from the people that he was around, which is true, but not he didn't allow the Holy Spirit to allow him to be delivered to where he could actually walk that deliverance out because it's by the spirit that allows us to do anything. How long were you all married? Um, we were married four years. And during that time, there was ups and, I mean, everybody has ups and downs, but right. he was still fighting those demons. Yes. Why did you stay with him? There's so many that don't. Right. Um, I, I would really honestly say the Lord led me to stay with him. And the reason being is because I knew his heart. And what God had showed me was to distinguish my husband from the addiction. And I had to hate the addiction, but still love my husband because I knew my husband's heart was to be delivered, to be set free, to do the things that God had called him to do. But because he had that struggle and me knowing his heart, that wasn't a time for me to leave. It was for me to constantly remind him who he was. He needed somebody in his ear to let him know you're not defined by what you do. You're defined by who God has called you to be. So you have to walk that out versus, you know, allowing this addiction to overcome you and, and basing your identity on that. So that's the reason why I believe God led me to stay with him. Talk about uh, some of the things, because there are people that are watching now that mm -hmm. are facing the same thing. Right. In the church. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, but I went to church. Yes, he did. Um, he didn't become bitter with the church. Mm -hmm. it, it, no. Well, there are some things he did mm -hmm. uh, become bitter with, but he right. continued to go. Yes. Um, do you think, well, talk about, talk about a little bit the stuff you went through before I go there with, with him through the addiction. Um, the one thing I can say is, you knew how I was raised. You know me since I was like 13 <laughs> yeah. years old. So I had no clue to that world, um, no clue what was going on. All I knew was that my husband was in trouble. Marietta went to work, <laughs> she went to church, <laughs> she hung out with her mom, uh -huh. Uh -huh. took care of her dad, yes, and that, that's the story. Yes, sir. And let's do it again next year. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. So when I was challenged with that, all I knew was he needed help. Um, I would literally go out trying to find him, go into the drug houses, ignorant of the environment that I was actually going into. You went in the drug house? Oh, yeah. Now? Oh, yeah. I, and I'm not saying that in a proud way. I'm saying no, that no, 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 in a way yeah. of being ignorant, not knowing. I want you to share because there are mm -hmm. others, yeah. Yeah, not knowing the danger that I would literally was putting myself in. I would go to the drug houses, literally banging on the doors, telling them to let my husband out. Um, there was so one you time. knew he was there? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, because I would be up most of the night trying to figure out where he was. There was a certain area, and those that live in Detroit know about the Brightmore area. So that was the area basically where if they he didn't, would go. They didn't, they know <laughs> Yes, sir. <Right>. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> so I knew he was within that area, so I would literally drive all night trying to find his car. And when I found his car, go into the place and tell him, let my husband out, or either I'm sitting outside honking the horn like, you know, you guys got to do something to let my husband out because, again, all I knew was my husband was in danger you from my them. viewpoint. You yes. loved him that much. Yes, but it took me about a year into the addiction to realize that I can't change him and that that's when the Lord really showed me how to walk by faith, to trust God for his life because I had put myself in a position as a wife that I never should have been in um, because there's certain things within a marriage that a wife is supposed to be and a husband is supposed to be. I took on the role as the husband, as a mm. protector, mm. as the leader. That's that wasn't good. my role. So in, in doing that, I caused things to happen to me, meaning physically. I literally gained like 35 pounds within a year. Um, so a lot of things happened to me because I stepped out of my place. That's because good. even though I chose to stay as his wife, he still needed to be the man of the house. So I had to kind of walk that walk and do that dance with him a little bit to um to like get to the point where okay if i'm gonna stay with him he still has to be the man of the house we have about four minutes i, I okay. want you to talk about what happened to him 
Um, one night, um, actually, it would be three years next Thursday on the 27th that he's um, passed. One night, he just left, um, left, left home, um, didn't come back that night, which because I knew about the addiction, um, I didn't really pay too much attention to it. But the only thing that kind of caught me off guard was that um, that was the longest period before he passed that he had been clean. So the ending of it, no one could have told me that he was going to die like that because I really felt a peace in my spirit that everything was fine, that, you know, God had it under control, which he still did. Um, but he left the house um, a Saturday night, um, didn't come back. So again, I didn't worry. I just trusted God. And then me getting ready for church that Sunday morning, the police come knocking on the door telling me that they found my car um, in some area of Detroit, can't remember where, that it was burned out and a body was in the car. And they, um, at that time, they couldn't tell me it was him because they needed to identify the body. So the next day, um, me and his family went down and we identified his body, that it was him. He was shot. Um, they put his body in the trunk of the car and burnt the car. Yeah. So ultimate deliverance. Yes. Yeah. Yes, because he loved the Lord, regardless to whatever he did to himself, um, he still loved the Lord. And that's why I said, I really believe, well, no, I don't believe, I know in my heart, that's the reason why I needed to be with him so that he had that constant reminder. Because had he been left out in the streets with nobody in his ear or encouraging him, maybe at that time he wouldn't have known to call on the name of the Lord because he was so engulfed in that, but because he still had that relationship with me, with his family, his mom, his brothers, and his sister, that he, I believe, at that time, he knew enough to call on God, you know, at that, at that very point that he was delivered. You started a foundation. Yes, sir. And the foundation is for? It is, was twofold. It's a scholarship that we're doing. Um, two um, scholarships we're giving out every year to anyone that wants to go back to school, someone that's had a background. In his name. Yes, in mm -hmm. his name, that, that's had a background kind of like he did, that's gone through a lot of different things. It's not an academic scholarship, but it's more so someone that wants to do something with their life and they just need some help. Um, and then also um, within the foundation, we're doing, um, during the holidays, um, doing Christmas baskets, feeding the hungry within the neighborhood where he did drugs. So something good has come out of yes, his sir. life. Yes, sir. And, and in one minute, I know this is hard to do, talk about what's in this book and who should read it. And we have five copies that she's donated. I wish I could do like Oprah and say, you're going to get one, you're going to get one, everybody's going to get one. <laughs> but uh, we have five copies that if you go to my Twitter page, because I'm, I'm hitting that 10,000 mark this week, yes, sir. Um, you, can, you can get it. The first five people that go to Twitter right now and, and just say, in my own words, in my own words, you have to be new though, you have to be new. In my own words, I'm, we're going to send you these books. Talk One minute we have to talk about who should read this book. Anyone that's had any type of struggle in their life, whether it's with drugs or trying to understand their walk with the Lord, that's pretty much who should read the book. Because, or uh, somebody that's dealing with somebody like you dealt with Exactly, him. Yeah. exactly. Because he's very candid and revealing in the book as far as the, the demons he's had to deal with, dealing with what he was dealing with while in the church, the response of the church to his addiction. So anyone that has any type of addiction or, like you said, a spouse or a family member or someone that has gone through what he's gone through to know that even in the midst of hell God is still there all right you've done a wonderful job uh, Mary was a little nervous and uh, uh, thank you so much for taking on this for your husband I'm Greg Davis get the book in my own words we'll be back with much more here on good news